Hello students and welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module Number 5. This is Equilibrium and Acid Reactions and it's video number one which is looking at reversible reactions. So what we've looked at in our Year 11 course is a number of different types of chemical reactions and ways that we can analyse chemical reactions to determine whether or not they're likely to be spontaneous. One of the important things, though, that we've looked at up until this point are concepts such as uh, limiting agents. And limiting agents is a concept that we, that we apply to reactions that are irreversible. That is, they only go in one direction. So combustion reactions, for example, uh, are where we have a fuel uh, and an oxygen supply, the fuel is going to combust or burn in the oxygen supply uh, in order to produce uh, products. The products often depend on the concentration of oxygen and maybe carbon, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. The reaction is limited only by either the amount of fuel that's available or by the oxygen. And when one or other of these runs out, then the reaction ceases. But there's another very important group of reactions, and they're the ones that we're going to be looking at in this particular topic. That group of reactions are reactions where we do not go all the way through to completion. At some point, we have both the reactants and the products present. And this is a characteristic of what we call equilibrium. You can think of equilibrium as, say, a seesaw. When two people are sitting on either end of a seesaw, they can be rocking up and down, or they can actually be sitting stationary. Now, when they sit stationary, it may well be that the two people have equal mass and they're at a, the same distance from the center, from the fulcrum of the seesaw. And as a result of that, they will balance. So if we have a little seesaw, we may have one person here and one person here, and they're balancing each other. Now we might also have a seesaw where there's a balance going, but it's not actually at an exactly even point. Equilibrium does not necessarily mean there is an equal amount of reactant and product. In fact, most of the time, it doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is that we have two reactions that are going on here. So our traditional reaction is where we have reactants forming products. And that's what we've been dealing with for most of our Year 11 course. But we also, in this particular um, set of reactions, have products forming reactants. Now we're going to look at a number of different examples both uh, on videos and also in the classroom where you'll be able to see how certain types of reactions can be shifted forwards and backwards. It's very difficult for example to think about um, the combustion of a fuel or the burning of magnesium for example as something that we can drive back in the opposite direction. But here is cobalt chloride. There's two forms of cobalt chloride, and these two forms are based on the presence of water molecules. Sometimes these water molecules are actually um, in a solution around or, or that have been used to dissolve um, the cobalt chloride, and sometimes they're actually locked up within the crystal structure themselves. We have different terms to describe this, anhydrous, which means without water or no water, and, uh, and then a hydrated form. We know we're hydrated when we have taken on water. Usually the hydrate has a prefix which indicates how many, so hexahydrate would be six water molecules, um, pentahydrate five, and so on. One of the important things is that we can shift the anhydrous blue form of cobalt chloride to the hydrated red form of cobalt chloride and just as easily we can shift it back. The fact that we have a process where we can reform the original reactants 
is a reversible reaction. And this whole concept is something that we're going to be looking at in great detail throughout this particular topic. Thanks for watching.